maker of fine interconnect cables. Wow, that's really close. Today, we have our favorite yellow Corvette back, and we're finishing the system. We talk about this a lot, doing systems in phases. Phase one was the new radio, the Sirius XM, the backup camera. Phase two is the audio portion, which of course is the more fun of the two personally. Let's see what's going on in this bad boy, because we got a stack of stuff. We have roadkill, we have flax components, we have flax coaxials, we have a Stinger Marine power kit. I'll get back to why we need that in a minute. Just let's keep going. We have a T1 shell mount woofer. We have two T-series amplifiers. We have a base knob. We have a distribution block. You guys asked what this is. This is the Stinger SPD570 dual block. We have this guy over here. This is a custom Corvette box that I had to modify to my specifications. Plan today is to try to get all this done in one day. Fernando, you ready? Ready. You look like you're still eating. Yes. I'm so ready. go. Fernando naturally is going to start over here on the driver's door. I'm going to start here in the trunk. I want to make sure this box fits perfect. I want to see how it looks before I put the carpet on it and whatnot. And to do that, there's a changer in here. So I need to get that out. Let's get in here and take a look. So there's six, seven millimeter bolts that hold this on. Yeah, it's a silly little wrench to get them off because it's real tight on this side. Not like most Corvettes of this era. This guy is broken. So we're gonna remove this back here so that we can pull these brackets out. It's got these little spinny things. These are the things that hold the cargo net. Go ahead and just pull those off. It's got these cool floor cabinets. Go ahead and pull the tops off of these. This is one of the few cars that GM makes that uses Velcro. Now GM for years have used non-LEDs, lights. These things have burned me so many times. Their lights get so hot. So the first thing you wanna do is definitely unplug these, get those out of the way. All right, we got the carpet out of the way. We're gonna go ahead and remove these four 10 millimeter bolts that hold this bracket in place and put this all back together. Box fits good, nice and snug. Ugh. So we just took the factory Bose speaker all apart. We got this all out and what we want to do is make a template of this. We want to go ahead and grab a piece of plastic that we can stick this onto and router out this template. First thing we want to do is get an idea of how big we need the plastic to be is 10 by 13 and a half. So we have our piece of plastic. Go ahead and screw this thing down so it doesn't slide around. Just kind of grab it and wiggle it, see if it moves at all. You don't want it to move once it gets over on the router. All right, so I forgot to hit the record button, I'm sorry. But basically what you want to do is when you're setting the height here, make sure that you turn this all the way around, you know, up, up against your stock piece. So while it's still sitting like this, check your bearing height, make sure that it's gonna ride this whole piece of plastic so that you end up with, you get your template. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and take it back over to the bench, drill these holes so we have all the holes that will allow it to go back into the factory. And then we have our basic template. We'll go ahead and apply this to our new template so that we can actually cut out the holes for the new speakers we're gonna put in. All right, so we have our template made. We're gonna reassemble this speaker back into here real quick, and then we'll start making these. For this, we're gonna go ahead and use half inch, just like the template is made out of, because we have lots of depth here that we have that we can work with as far as on the inside of the door panel. Half inch is gonna be super rigid. Let's get some tape on it. I'm gonna go ahead and drill all my screw holes. All right, let's take it over to the router. All right, I made sure I turned the camera on this time. And we're also gonna go ahead and put our guard back on. The only reason why we took it off is because we knew we were gonna have to get this really high, the template we were making. All right, we're done with this template. We'll hang it on our shelf. That way we'll have it for next time. Now what we wanna do is figure out gonna mount our six and a half and our tweeter. To figure out our positioning, what we did is we went ahead and removed the grill from the door panel to kind of get an idea of where the factory speakers are sitting. As you can see, the mid range is way the heck up here where it's gonna get blocked. This has got plenty of room. Thinking is we wanna make sure we move our mid base as far down as possible. Probably put the tweeter in this area here. So I'm gonna pull this back out, put our template in place and kind of trace this line right here in it so we know what area we need to work with. 
So we got this all put back together. What we know right now is that when the door panel goes on, it basically sits like this over the speaker. So that would be one of the reasons why the highs in this thing just absolutely suck. We trace that line onto our template here. This actually is a good thing for us because for one, now we know that we need to mount this guy down low in the door here. We're gonna mount our new tweeter up high here like this. So it's in the, the, the furthest most corner of the door panel. And then we have these crossovers here here, just like this guy right here, so this giant piece that's here, we can now mount our crossovers just like this onto this, emulating this whole guy right here. So this is gonna allow us to get our new speakers in, keep this nice and dry, well mounted towards the front of the door, not the back of the door. This is this, the cutout for the speaker. This is the actual size of the speaker. This is just the grill. We're using this as a template. So let's go ahead and get this grill mounted in place. We'll find our center point for this so we can hole saw through here. We have our two templates. Now what we went and did, as you can see here, we planed this top a little thinner. That way this crossover can sit like this, recessed into the door a little bit. The factory sticks out quite a bit here in the front. So I really wasn't worried about the depth. I just wanted to make sure it was, wasn't was gonna hit anything. Still be able to get the screw in. Tweeter pods will mount right into place like this. Speaker goes in like that. So this is what it's gonna look like before it gets mounted onto the door. I'm gonna hand these off to Fernando. All right, so Fernando is almost wrapping up the driver's front door. Let's take a look and see how it came out. Crossover mounted, like we said, the door panel fits over this perfect. For a fast ring, we went ahead and used the six by nine fast ring so that we could incorporate the tweeter. We just didn't want to do the mid base. We wanted to make sure we got all this sound through the door panel, through this area here on the door panel. So the next step is to go ahead and road kill the outside of the door. The inside is all done. You went ahead and pulled off the part that was all broken apart, like the factory sound deadening that was here. We removed that. We put new road kill there to cover that up. So if they ever need to get in here, they can just peel this off just like you have to do for the factory. Good job, Fernando. I know, right? All right, well, let me get out of his way so that he can finish road killing the door. hold this T1 in place, what we have is a double baffle plus a countersink. This is a really strong baffle to be able to hold all that weight. So we went ahead and we took out the speaker cup because we want to go ahead and solder on. The woofer's sitting right there, so I'm going to go ahead and get that out. I also have to see if we have a grill. I think we might want a grill, I'm not sure yet. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is unbox the two amplifiers and make sure, get an idea of how we want them to go in there. No surprise, 
we're going with these guys mainly because of size and in this case the size is small we want to go with something we know is going to fit in the size we have so we have the 404 and we're going to have the 750.1 now relax it's silver don't worry it'll be black by the end of the show we have more blacks coming in so we're going to use this as our mock-up amplifier and then we'll swap it out for the black one in the very end let's go ahead and take these over to the car and get an idea of where they're going to go so we've come up with a plan for the amplifiers let's take a look. Battery in this car is on the passenger side, so the plan is to go up the passenger side with the wiring. We'll go up the passenger side outside along, along the side here for the power wire, and then all the signal will come up around this way and go up the center of the car so that they are separated from one another. The idea is to mount the amplifiers, the four channel towards the back, the mono towards the front. That may flip, I don't know. The idea though is to put the distribution block on the ground, power wires come out and then fan out to each amplifier. We'll make a piece of plastic that's U-shaped that, so the amplifiers just drop in, mount in place, and everything will you know, be sexy. So that's the plan right now. Now there is the cover like that that goes over it. I've talked to the customer. 90% of the time he's not going to be doing anything other than driving the car so there'll be no reason to have the cover over it but when he goes to car shows and stuff like that he can go ahead and put the cover over it so no one can see those we just want to make sure there's proper ventilation on these and also that they're out of the way so that he can use what little space he has in the trunk so that's the plan for right now we're gonna go ahead and get a tape measure get some paper take some measurements cut some plastic bend some plastic you know fun stuff like that I got crap on my face. We had a little change in plans as far as what we wanted to do for the amplifier. I've been kind of messing with that a little bit and we've come up with a different idea. Originally, we were gonna put him in that back corner, which was cool. And then he decided, you know what? I'd really like to see him. Like, uh, okay, let me show you what we have here for room. This is the space right here. This area right here, that's it. That's what you have because the top goes in, the subwoofer box is in the back. So there's not a lot of room. So what we've come up with so far is a four piece amp rack that's going to hold all these things. Now the top piece is this guy right here. This is some half inch. We're gonna mount the amplifiers like this. They're gonna sit basically just like that on this piece and this will be covered in a material. And then underneath it is going to be this guy. It's gonna sit on this. And then we have two more pieces here which I'm just getting ready to router out this part right here because we don't need this area. This is where all the wiring is gonna go. And this is two more pieces so that's an inch thick. So I'm gonna remove that part of it right now and I'll be right back. Here's the roughed out version of essentially what we come up with. This is a hole for all the wiring to come out. The amplifiers will sit over the holes and be suspended up about a half inch. The two power wires will come into the distribution block and then go back out. We have a gap here so there's plenty of room for the wires to run underneath and then the signal will go up the center console and the power will go down the passenger side as we talked about. Now we're going to go ahead and cover these with some stuff. Whatever I got laying over here.
here is our amp board all covered so we did some suede here this is carpet vinyl carpet and then we put some yellow accents in it now we're to that time we have to get these amplifiers all mounted up The amp rack is finally finished. We have the two amplifiers mounted. Like we said, all the wires tuck up underneath. Here is the distribution block with our ground side and our power side.
This is the new Stinger Marine Wire. This stuff right here. This is two four gauge. It's their high performance line. It's 100% copper. Very heavy. Comes in two lengths right now, like a 20 foot, like an eight foot. For this, we grabbed the 20 footer. The reason why we did that is because it's a Corvette. It's more like a boat than anything. But even though it has a frame, you have to get to it. And a lot of the times, it's very difficult to do that. In this case, we figured it would just be easier to run a power and a ground. Now, most of the time, you'd run equal length power, equal length ground two wires but now that stinger has this this makes it really nice now this is going to be helpful for a lot of things so like the fords with the aluminum chassis if you're worried about grounding points and you're doing a big system well you can use the marine wire now and do equal length power and ground so that's why we chose this stuff the fact that it's yellow is kind of nice but the car's yellow but you won't actually see it because we put heat shrink over it so if you have a boat or a corvette or a ford and you want a double run of four gauge check it out this is done i'm going to get it over into the car so that we can start getting these wires situated, ran, all that fun stuff. Oh, the easy part's done. <laughs> the amplifiers are in and mounted. So let me show you what I did. This piece of plastic right here that you were wondering what the heck that was sticking off of there. There's a bolt right here. Drill the hole. There's a nut right here. This is holding it, but then when the cover goes back over it, it rests up against this whole piece of plastic. And then this will just keep this guy right where it needs to be in the car. Now we still need to run this. This is the subwire. This will get tucked up all in there. I just wanted to give you guys an overview of what's going on. Fernando is running the power wire here. We just had to pull out the seat belt to get it to go up underneath it because obviously this is some big stuff. I think this would make some pretty jumper cable, don't you? Oh, definitely. So as you can see, it's a 20 foot run, so we're gonna have a lot extra. We have the box in place. And if you look really, that, see, you, can, you can see the yellow, yeah. Now the top is down, so once the top goes up, you will be able to see that stripe. So Fernando's just finishing up the battery. We have the wires ran. The amplifiers are mounted in place there. Still need to run everything up behind to the radio. We haven't done that yet. Now the reason why I pull the battery out is because there's a giant grommet right down there, uh -huh. which makes it, you know, it's a, we drilled the hole, but it does make it easier to drill the hole. So why don't you go feed uh -huh. it from that side and I'll pull it. So you can see that giant grommet right there. So if you're just doing a small wire, you could easily. All right, here we go. Ugh. Keep in mind, if it is way easier to pull out the battery. Fernando's already made the fuse holder mount, which is this guy right here. So once we get it in, we'll show you a close up view of that. Now, because we did a power and a ground, we used the Pro Bats from Stinger. This gives us the ability to add our wires on there. Fuse holder is mounted in place. Now we're gonna go ahead and get rid of our cool little fender skirt here, close the hood. We're gonna get the passenger side of the car put back together before we start over here running the 
RCAs and all that up the center console. While he's getting ready to do that, I need to go over to the bench. Let me show you why. So in the previous video, we went ahead and installed this guy here, which is the VET harness. For this install, we really don't need any of this at all. So we're gonna go ahead and rebuild the harness, cut the tape back, reattach our two cameras, and just add in a regular 1858 harness, which is this guy right here. That way we don't have to take up any of this room in the dash and it's wasted. So I'm gonna go ahead and rebuild this while Fernando finishes, as I said, putting this back together over here. And then these are the RCAs. We need to get them down as low as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this seat, at least unscrew it so that we can tilt it out of the way and we can run our RCA's speaker wire and all the funness there. So we of course tape the heck out of this thing. So the first thing we want to do is get the tape off and out of the way. Now if you ever have the pleasure of having to remove the tape like this, use a fresh blade. Fresh blade will cut through this a heck of a lot easier than a dull one or a seam ripper. So this guy has been removed. Now, real quick, one of the questions in the video or comments I should say when we did the install video was, I can't believe there's no accessory in the harness. I believe Pack probably, you know, it was all Pack's fault that there wasn't. And no, there is no accessory in this harness. Even though this is an old 1858 and way before any of the data stuff was being used, it was being used in the Corvette. This is an 1858, which is the same as this. Let's go head over in the car and I'll show you the harness so you can see that there is no wiring there to be had. Here's our factory harness here. And you can see this gaping hole between the orange and the green. Come over here, that would be the power antenna. And this is the accessory between the two. There's that gaping hole right there. The other thing you'll notice is the two orange illumination wires. There again, a gaping hole. They're just not there. This Metro just came out with a cool dash kit that we used in this car. They also came out with a smart harness for this car so that if you don't want to have to go find the accessory and the illumination wires and the reverse well, you still have to find the reverse trigger. But anyways, if you don't want to go find those wires, their new smart harness will give you those so that it makes your job a little bit easier. But that's up to you. Either way is fine. But yeah, this car, no accessory. It's crazy, I know. All right, let's get back to building this harness. Because we're not gonna need any of those wires, we'll just go ahead and pull those out of the harness. And in this case, because we're not gonna be using any of the rear speaker wires, we ran our own, we'll go ahead and remove those as well. On our Pioneer harness, we'll go ahead and grab all these speaker wires and cap those off. This is our rebuilt harness. We've added a second relay. So we had one relay already attached, which was for the accessory because we tapped an accessory. So we went ahead and added a second relay for remote turn on. These are little micro relays that we steal out of other harnesses that we have that are extra. You could just pick up one of these. This is a normal Bosch style relay. It has five pins on it. These two outside ones, 85 and 86, are gonna be your accessory and your ground. 87 is going to be your constant 12 volts that you're gonna use or whatever source you're using to power the remote turn on. In this case, we typically just use the yellow, which is constant 12 volt. And then 30 is gonna be out to the remote turn on. Then 87A is not gonna be used. If you wanna know more about relays, we do have videos on those. You can check those out. But otherwise, this guy is all set. We're gonna go ahead and get this in the car and get us one step closer to buttoning this thing up. everything in what we're gonna do before we get this dash all back together naturally is do a little bit of testing so we have balance and fader left right where we want it and now we want to go ahead and test the polarity make sure all our speakers are popping the right direction now we're all set back front side to side sounds like a coolio song all right cool we can continue on all right so one of the cool things about these new t-series amplifiers is that they have the distortion detectors built into it they come with this cool disc go ahead and we'll slide this in now when you're doing this there's a couple prerequisites for one unplug the speakers don't leave the speakers plugged into the amplifiers whatever you do don't leave the speakers plugged in the amplifier and two make sure you unplug the bass knob don't leave the bass knob plugged in those are those are the most important things there's 
there's two steps that you have to this. One is going to be testing the output of the radio into the amplifier. And for that, you wanna make sure that the gains are turned all the way down and you're gonna turn this up. The second is once you've done that, then you can move on for your gain overlap DB test where you do negative five, negative 10, whatever you like there. So there's two different clip lights. We're gonna do that. All right, so we have the speakers unplugged for the highs. We have the speaker unplugged for the sub. Now what we're talking about is there's lights here which says in, clip out. So the first one we wanna look at is here. So we're gonna come here and we're gonna grab our EQ and we're gonna set it to flat. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and start with the sub amp which we're gonna play track five which is 40 hertz, zero dB. All right, so that red light there is telling us we're maxed out. We're gonna go ahead and turn it down one. And at zero dB, we're also, the input is set pretty much maxed out too, but we're not gonna worry about that. We're gonna go ahead and set this at negative five dB, which we're gonna go to track nine. So now we'll go ahead and give it a little bit of gain. And got a little bit of blue. And the flashing is from the camera's shutter speed. It's got nothing to do with the light doesn't flash like that. We also have our punch EQ set to halfway up, which is where we want it. Now we're gonna come over here and do the high amp. We wanna start off with this is at 38 because that's where the sub amp clips. So we know we're not gonna go any higher than 38. So at 38, we don't get an input clip. So we can go ahead and we can adjust the gain up to that input to where we just start to get our blue light. All right, and we'll repeat this onto the rear. All right, so we have our blue input lights on. This is at zero dB. For the rears, that's perfectly fine. I don't really need the rears to be killing it, but for the fronts, I am gonna set those at negative five, which on this is gonna be track 11. There we go. So now what this is doing is this is gonna make the fronts louder than the rears, which is okay because they're right here by your head, so you don't need them that loud. In most radios nowadays, they have level control for front, rear, and whatnot, and not just fader, but actual channel level control. We could adjust it there, but with this particular radio, if you disconnect the battery, you lose it all. So it's a lot easier to just do it at the amplifier. Input, output, carburetor full soot. Wow, it's Coolio now Sir mix lot Anyways, we have these all set up. We're gonna get this all cleaned up, put the dash back together because we don't have any more testing we need to do. And then we'll do some final tuning and listening. The best part, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so this is what the amp wrap looks like once it's in the car. You can see the yellow we put in it there, a little accent to it. You can see that's that's where the plastic is that goes up that holds it in place so that won't slide around. Is that 50 right there? 50 right here. See 52. No, 57 is right because if you figure there's about two inches into the door and then three inches to the yeah, center right. of the head. Yeah. So we'll take it down to 55. Yeah. So sometimes Pioneer's time alignment is dead on and other times it, it's off just a tad. In this case, it was off just a tad. So we went ahead and fixed it. You know, the auto EQ is a good place to start, but don't, it's, it's not 100%. It's just a good place to start. He listens to Rush, so we're going to start over. I am Denise, I'm so you mean. Yeah, you know, I have to admit, half the fun of tuning the system is actually just listening to the music. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, we finish the tune pretty quick. I mean, there's a lot of little things that we just will tweak here and there, but listening to five or 10 or whatever songs, really, it's- It's, it's kinda, the joy it, it's of kinda, the It's thing. kinda like after working on a car for, in this case, a day and a half, it makes it worthwhile because, you know, putting it in and, and having it look pretty, that's that's its own reward. But being able to sit in it and then- So this is like a popsicle for a kid? This is a popsicle. Yeah, yeah. There you go, this is your popsicle. So this is the cake and the strawberry on top. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the times we'll just sit in the cars and listen to music and, and Paul be like, I'm like, we're still tuning it. It's not, we're, no, we're done. We've been done like three songs ago. We just want to listen to more music because it sounds- You enjoy it. I mean, yeah. it like, I yeah. deserve it. <laughs> it. It's like, it sounds so good. And you just don't, it's like, a, you don't want it to leave. You know, it's like- uh, Can I ride with you? Yeah. 
Only if you can get me to the border because the sheriff's after me for what I did to his daughter. Hey, and there we go, Beastie Boys reference. All right, guys, listen, hey, we're gonna call this one a show. Thanks so much as always. We Sound hope really you, good. Yeah, we hope you enjoy this as all always, as we love to say, and we'll keep saying it as long as you guys keep bringing us your cars. On to the next one. Exactly. Have a nice night, nice day, whatever. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Come on, you can do it. Get to the good part. <laughs>